هذا هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ولنتهلل به المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور Christos anesti epne kron thanaton, thanaton batisas, keti sentith ni masi zoif karis amenos. Welcome back everybody. Welcome to the next segment of Big Bang Theorel's uh, BTS vlog. It is 9 hours and 50 minutes into the day of Tuesday, May 24th, 2016. This is the bizarre factor here, and this has to do with the shift in day and time of when you get up at 9 o'clock at night, and you end up going to bed at 10 o'clock in the morning. Your sense of day and night starts to shift. And it's, not, it's bad enough that if, if, if this is a regular schedule, but if there's not a regular schedule, in other words, your time shifts as to when you're asleep and when you're awake, at some point in time, your your, perce your perception of day and, day and night uh, also becomes askew. <coughs> and you refer to the, the day before yesterday, uh, what you consider to be your day before. And it's not the day before, it's just so, simply... Are earlier in that day, but the thing is, is that uh, the times are off. Oh, not sort of the situation here. Um, the work on the music studio in electronics magic got pushed off. Uh, there is some extra work that needs to be done here. Uh, I did get the vlogging sort of caught up, uh, so we are on. The vlog, now we're filming the vlog for the 24th and 25th because, well, it's more likely to be the 25th actually, uh, tw no, the 24th. And this is, this is, days up, it, this is the beginning of the, of the 24th of, uh, of, of May. So it's Tuesday. This <laughs> is. You know, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's Tuesday, May twenty fourth, uh, two thousand sixteen. And I thought yesterday, because the way my perception was going, I thought yesterday was uh, the twenty fourth. It was Tuesday, but it's not. It's still, it's still, it's still today. Even though uh, I have it twice, sort of thing, sort of, sort of say. Uh, <laughs> uh, there go the days. Um. Yeah, uh, yeah, so the front room, the, uh, the music studio and, uh, electronics mentioned didn't get finished today. Uh, I have, so I'll schedule that for tomorrow. I had to end up doing some more work over here. And so when I get up again, I'll set the schedule and sort of see how we'll get things done from there on out. So, uh, these, uh, short vlogs like this are important. They do have their place. Uh, not all of them are going to have, <coughs> not all, <excuse> <coughs> not all segments will have in-depth discussions, because uh, some of it's just about mundane stuff. I mean, the only thing I will say right now is that, uh, uh, watching some, uh, some more lectures and docu documentaries, uh, uh most of your polished documentaries that you find on Discovery Channel and all those, these, these popular science channels really do, in a sense, cause a problem with science in terms of perception. That every day is like a documentary. That every day in my life is sort of an exciting step of discovery where... Uh, you're living the life of a documentary, and everyone's you know applauding you all the way through, and you're winning all these awards. 
Uh, but that's not the purpose of research. That's not the purpose of science. The purpose of science is to go out and do exploration. And a lot of times you 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 spend years uh, researching something in order just to bring it a step further. In other words, your knowledge is incremental, even over a period of, period of years, it's still only incremental. You, you've gone well far from day to day, <coughs> all things considering. But in the total, total scheme of things, even after 5, 10 years, or 25 years, there's still so much more to go. You feel like you've just scratched the surface. You've just begun, you know, sort of finding your way around. And even when you do find a way around for a bit, that's why I say for a bit, because you find a way around, you, you think things are going well, you go turn the corners to so see what else is there, you know, I like think there's something small there, like, uh, like, like, you know, five more minutes, five more minutes, and it ends up being noon. Well, in this case, now it's just about 10 o'clock in the morning. And the thing is, is that you find another large doorway that leads to another mountain. And so the mountain you thought you had climbed and reached the top, and now you're exploring around, you find another mountain just as high to climb, to get up to the next level. And you repeat the same thing over and over, and year after year, uh, you know, now for me, decade after decade. Uh, it's sort of the same thing. And you have, the, the late nights isn't something that I'm forced to do. No one forces me to do these late nights, or keep this work schedule. It's as I'm working, I find new things, uh, I find things that are interesting, uh, take my notes, organize my notes, and start putting them together to develop a better understanding of things. Uh, now I'm taking my notes, uh, rearranging them, and sort of as I'm thinking about re the, the, the work that I'm doing, I present the BDS vlogs. This is sort of the behind the scenes. It's unedited. It's raw. There's no sort of cutting or, or editing in here. Everything comes in as the way it is. Uh, my my coughs, my sneezes, uh, if some, if something itches or <laughs> whatever, it's all in the film. It's all it's all recorded because and, and and not edited out because this is the way a science journal works. You don't edit things out. Further, uh, I'm leaving this stuff in here uh, because I'm tracking the physiology uh, as I push myself to the limits. You know what is my what is my health like day to day? What is uh, uh, you know, uh, my fatigue like day to day. Uh, these things are useful for research, for other, other even other researchers when they want to take a look at something. Because, because I've got the time date, time and date stamp on here, because I have a good timeline in here, it forms a very good, uh, in many ways, a sort of observational platform to see uh, how I interact with my research. Uh, what effect does these long 12, 13, 14 hour days have on a person's body? Uh, what does the fatigue actually look like uh, in terms of uh, seeing someone who is fatigued on a regular basis uh, because of the length of hours that they're working or whatever, you know. And again, this is not work that we're um, 9 to 5 and have to do a, a horrible job, you know, a horrible have a horrible career or... Uh, I, I'm not happy. I am. This is this is a great job, and my problem is it's like a video game. You get you get addicted to it and you can't stop. And so this is this is my video game addiction. Uh, actually, going out and researching the world and seeing the world for what it is. Anyways, uh, I think I'm gonna leave this here for now because uh, I'm I do want to go to bed now. And I will see you in the next segment of the BTS vlog uh, when I get up next. I might stay sleeping the entire the whole, my entire night, or I might get up partway through and have something to drink, have something to eat. You know, the ref the, f the refueling stuff <laughs> that should be around maybe uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Anyways, we'll go from there. I'll see you then. Welcome back, everybody, to the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory House BTS Log. Yeah, this is going to be a mistake here, so I'm going to include it, uh, but I have to go back and check something first before the next segment starts. Welcome back, everyone, to the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory House BTS Log. 
<laughs> mistakes happen, and but in scientific vlogs, in scientific research logs, all mistakes are included. They're not erased, and uh, they're simply referenced to and acknowledged as a mistake. And later on, you go back and correct them in later work when you updating when you're updating your notebook. So, anyways, uh, let's get started. Kisos uh, Anesti, Messiahum, and Christ is risen. Uh, time and day stamp is uh, 21 hours and 47 minutes into the day of uh, Wednesday, May 25th, 2016. Yay! <laughs> uh, I thought it much, much later than that. Uh, <laughs> when the days are, are, are off like this, it's very difficult to determine where you are in the actual number of days. So, uh, I thought I had been asleep for two days straight. But it wasn't. I was only asleep for about when I counted it out. It's about thirteen hours. But the problem was, is it went from the twenty fourth to the twenty fifth, uh, sort of with some interruption, but in between, but not much. It was like, it was up for maybe a couple hours, and then ended up going back to bed again. Uh, so that's kind of uh, how things ended up. Uh, I mean, at least, at least that's my perception of what happened anyways. What actually happened, I don't really know. I'll have to go back over when I watch it and sort of see uh, where the gaps in the days are. <laughs> this will sort of give me an idea of where we are and where we're not. Because uh, there were two periods that, that I should have logged, but I didn't. Uh, uh, and uh, I was just too tired to do that. So here we are. Anyways, the, the continuing our discussion on uh, on, on uh, atheistic uh, agnosticism and moving into that particular uh, definition, and this is again, this is part of the research here. This is part of observation. It says certain observations are apparent. Some observations are not apparent. It depends on what you see, and you don't, because you don't see everything. It's impossible to see everything. Um, you are always working on the assumption that you should always be working from the assumption that what you're seeing is apparent and that there's always more to be seen. Uh, and that as your observations continue and you consider various different other options, that your understanding incrementally increases towards the absolute but never actually reaches the absolute. In other words, your understanding is always in the limit. Now this is something you need to understand. You need to go take a look at the fundamentals of calculus. If you're really serious about this, uh, you need to take a look at this at the at the called something called the fundamentals of calculus. The term is called a limit. Understand what it actually means beyond the mathematics. How it, how it means you know, it, it, the some of these mathematical terms have applications outside of simply raw mathematics being being abstract uh, being abstract within the mind. That's what I'm saying. Is you can go, you can take a lot of the stuff that was done. Uh, intellectually, an abstract, and then having a application to it. This is what uh, Newton did. Newton took uh, mathematics, and, that which was raw and unapplied, and he applied it. You know, he he, he fit it to uh, wor uh, world mechanisms. He used things to understand things better, to, incre to increase his understanding. And the thing is, is that this is, we're in a sort of the same situation here. We worked to increase our understanding. This is why I say if you go back and take a look at Galileo uh, uh, Galileo, you go back and take a look at uh, 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 at uh, uh, Aristotle, you see that the conflict there wasn't really a conflict. The concept conflict was more of uh, it was more of a perception than anything else. It wasn't a real conflict. You could say you're in conflict with somebody, but actually if you sit down and look at the argument sometimes you'll find that they're arguing more along the same thing along the same, their, their arguments fundamentally agree, but just the details, some of the details may, may be, may differ. Sorry about that. Uh, and this is sort of, sort of the case with uh, Galileo, Galileo and Newton kind of lined up, because they were doing more abstract work, they were, um, uh, Taking the ideal situation of physics when they were describing forces, uh, Galileo was rolling uh, balls down uh, slopes and inclines. But the thing is, is that 
And he made his observation on, the, on this, on, on this, on, on this, the balls rolling down. This, you know, this, his, his experiments when he used balls. But what would happen? Let's say instead of using balls, he uses blocks on a flat plane, even though it's unclined. Do you get the same results? And the thing is, I think Aristotle, who is, it has recently been found that he did do experimentation. A lot of his stuff was op was observational saw blocks being moved because he was he was at the time of Alexander the Great all these monuments were being built a lot of the monuments were being built there and you had a uh, you had a view of things that Galileo may not have had I'm not saying that Galileo didn't have this observation uh, but Aristotle was in a position where he was next to the king he was next to Alexander the Great and he was at he was the authority at the time. That's the thing. Uh, Aristotle was the scientific authority at the time. Because he was the uh, advisor to Alexander the Great. And so what happens is that the position that see, Galileo was not advisor to the papacy. The papacy at the time was the king. It was the highest level you could go. Uh, but he was not the scientific advisor to the papacy. Somebody else was. And the thing is, is that this whole conflict between the church, which he interpreted to be a view of Aristotle, was not the view of necessarily the view of Aristotle. It was the church's, the papal's, it was the papists' understanding, the papist view of Aristotle. And that's what people can remember: is that views come to you through history, not directly through Aristotle or or, or the person that may be talked about, but rather, or, or, or an event, but rather through interpretation, somebody else's view. And this is what we can be careful to say, well, who is telling you the story? Who is the person? And where did he get this information from? Is it first-hand knowledge? Is he actually just sort of giving you the, the, the original source and say, here, go read it for yourself? And well, having you know, having a discussion for it, is he teaching you but not telling you what the original source is? This makes a difference, because there, what happens is if you're just having a discussion, and he says, "Here's the source, go read it for yourself," then what happens is you could you could accept his source as okay, well, that's his opinion, uh, and until you read it for yourself or find enough evidence that this is what was the case, and say, okay, yeah, this is this is right. He's got the general, and again, it's, the right is not absolute. It's in a the whole sense of in the limit. It's an approximation of the truth. Uh, because no one is going to actually, no one can give you the absolute truth other, other than the person who created the initial who created the initial event first. You know, in other words, you, you, unless you're observing something directly, you have no more truth than the than the direct observation. And that's why I say to many people, is it's not enough simply to go, oh, I read this book and now you know. No. The only the, fir the, 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 only the, the first knowledge, the, uh, the observation, is the true knowledge. And that's the closest you'll ever get to this, this understanding. That's the thing. The rest of it is a sub-step backwards and adds to your observation. In other words, it's an additive to your observation that pushes you closer towards an understanding. And this is sort of the standard that we have to take here, and this is what, what we're doing now, is we, we're, we're defining uh, our environment, and this is what I talked about, uh, atheist agnosticism, I talked about uh, pantheistic ag agnosticism, uh, uh, polytheistic agnosticism, and even monotheistic, monotheistic agnosticism. These, even though you have atheism, uh, pantheism, uh, polytheism, and, and monotheism, sort of say, oh, this is this, it's their own thing. But the first structure, the first structure in, we've, that we've seen so far through observation, the first structure that you move into in terms of understanding uh, the, the question of God is agnosticism. It's not, is the uncertainty of God. And the, there may not be a God there, or there may be a God there. So if you're not with a God, you're an athe you're, you're, you're atheistic agnosticism. If you, but this is where you're not sure. But we said before, we said before <clears throat> we said before, everything is in the limit. And since you never can approach the absolute truth 
particularly because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And then other physics as well comes in and causes other doubt to push us back even further. You can never get to the point where you are actually athe an atheist. You can believe in atheism, which is which is basically what the def definition of agnosticism is. It's a, agnosticism is basically is is it, it comes down to it's your, your elemental belief without any specific specific form of knowledge. So there's an uncertainty in in terms of your, of whether there is a god or not. So if you're on the uh, on the that you believe there's not a god, instead of being an atheist, you're now atheistic agnosticism. So you're still an agnostic, but you're now on an atheistic side of agnosticism. Uh, same thing if you believe there is a God, then you're a theist, or, 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 or theistic uh, agnostic, uh, agnostic. In other words, you have to have that description in front of agnosticism, or agnostic, in order to, uh, in, in order to <coughs> qualify what type of agnostic are you. Because that's your beginning. That's your observed beginning. The reality of the situation right now, this is the way it is now, the beginning is now agnosticism, and then you move from there on out. And then the surprising thing is you would say, well, why is monotheism uh, part of agnosticism? Because uh, that's, that's where it shows, uh, actually, archaeologically, there are found, there are some, many texts, actually, texts from the Bible, uh, and this is where the Bible was not one single text, it was a whole variety of texts, and this is evident by the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, that talked about a variety of different aspects of uh, uh, of things, and some of them were forgeries, some of them were, some of them were real, some of them weren't real. You know, you don't know what, and no one knows what was what. So there, and there were texts there called the Gnostic texts, uh, and there was also another Gnostic. There was a Gnostic text that talked about uh, God and magic. It talked about Christ and magic, and this is sort of these things have sort of uh, in this, one of these sort of so-called uh, books like that. Is, is the Gospel according to Thomas. This is one of the more famous texts. Go we'll take a look at the Gospel according to Saint uh, uh, the Apostle Thomas. And you'll find that this is an agnostic text. And uh, if you read f further enough on it, uh, it would bring up your library. On the, uh, uh, every time you go in to do something, re some reform of research, and this is sort of a tangent here, you do have to build a small library on it. It's not enough to get it to go up and get a single search. You'll need about, if you're going to do a good research job on this, you'll need about 20 or 30 sources. So don't stop at one or two or a book. Go to 20 or 30 different sources. Try to go out as far as you can. And even go into people who you think are nuts. And use them as a source. But again, check them out. Every time you bring in a source, you have to find sources to back up that source. This is where the problem comes in. Sometimes you're you know, finding a source. Oh, good source here. You have to go find the sources for that source. You, know, you have to validate. You have to qualify that source. And qualifying isn't looking for a piece of paper. Oh, he's qualified. It's looking at what he's written, what he's produced, uh, and sort of qualifying the person with this other work in, in addition to the one you're particularly interested in. See, you know, well, well, is he a good person? Is, it, uh, does, uh, is his information pretty good there? Is it pretty bad? Or is it, you know, this is how you qualify what the source is. But you need like 20 or 30 other sources in order to really sort of bring in your original point that you're looking at. So this is why it takes sometimes like, you know, uh, 12, 13 hours more or even up to 20 hours a day going through all these different sources because you're at a, on a good roll and you don't want to stop. You don't want to stop when you're on a good roll and you're finding good sources. You don't want to stop because you're, you're, you're making progress. So it's five minutes, five, five minutes later, five minutes later, and then five minutes later it ends up before you finally end. Uh, it's, you know, it's noon, between noon and two o'clock in the afternoon and you haven't gone to bed yet since, since the day before. So... Uh, and the other thing is that these are these are the areas of, of, of agnosticism. Uh, the other area we have to make a de the definition in that we talked about before is to find the, the the different the the differences in Christianity between the pre papal Christianity, that's the Eastern Christianity, and the post papal papal Christianity. Uh, and even in there, you have in the pre papal you have uh, two different uh, structures. You have a quantum god and you have a linear god. Uh, the linear God always tries and seeks to separate uh, the Holy Trinity, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and create an order amongst them that is not identical. In other words, they try to split the Holy Trinity up. Uh, and bring in a sort of called a logical sense to the Holy Trinity. Uh, the one that doesn't make sense, doesn't try to make a logical sense of the Holy Trinity, that's the quantum God. That's the quantum area. And because they allow these things to exist, even though they don't understand it, they're observing it, they don't understand it, but that's the way it is. That's what we're seeing. We're not going to try and delineate. We're not going to try to make it logical. We're going to accept it the way it is. Uh, and that's sort of the best way of doing things sometimes. Uh, so the other area that we have to go and talk about, we talk about, to talk about uh, religion and theology now. That's our next area of definition. And this is where, this is where, where many, I would say many or most atheists get hung up. They talk about religion as if it's the most important thing. And the thing is, if you talk about religion and say that atheism is not a religion, you're wrong. Atheism is a religion because you don't understand the definition of religion. Religion is simply the practices that you have based on something you believe. And something you believe, particularly when you're looking at it from the perspective of physics and the research, is simply a theory. So you have, a th you have a theory, and how you practice that theory in reality, in your life, is religion. And it, the, that theory could be anything. It could be a theory on sports. You could be a major sports nut. And if you watch sports in such a way that it's a, it's a routine part of your life, and you have rituals when you're watching these sports, whether it's how you arrange your chips or what chips, are, what foods you have, uh what t-shirts you wear, uh, whether you shave or not, these are all rituals, and that's part of religion. That, that's what defines religion. So the sports, the sports can be your religion. Uh, and so what happens when you go back to the theory, when you talk about specifically a God theory, uh, you can either talk about metaphysics, a metaphysical theory, or more specifically talk about theology. Th theology defines what you believe about a God. And that's what I'm saying. So uh, an atheistic theology but to say that there is no God and work on that definition there. It, it, it would expand its philosophy, its theory out on there is no God. That's, and that would be the atheist, atheistic theology. And so this is what you want to look at. You want to peel back the religion argument and look at the fundamental theology. What specifically do, do they believe? Do they believe there is not a God or do they, do they believe there is a God? And if they believe there is a God, how is this God defined? Is he anthropomorphic? In other words, does he look like man? Is he, is, is he uh, you know, like, like, like Zeus? Like you, have, you have the painting on the Sistine Chapel of God. God the Father. Go into the ancient texts of the, of the Gospel, of the Bible, which are in Greek, they're not in Hebrew. Uh, the Hebrew was lost a long time ago. No one knows where the Hebrew went actually went. No one knows what the Hebrew at that time looks like. Uh, so Hebrew that we talk about today is not the Hebrew of uh, the ancient world. Uh, it's not the Hebrew that was existed back then. It's gone through a number of changes, but these changes have gone undocumented. Uh, you have to go into the ancient Greek, and this is what I'm saying, where I am. This is my backyard. Uh, and I said, look, look, look at your backyard. You'll be surprised at sometimes what you have in your own backyard. And I said, I found a whole gold mine. Uh... What were we talking about? Anyways, I think I'm going to leave this here for now. I'll have to come back and subscribe. <laughs> this has completely gone out of my mind. Uh, that happens sometimes, though. So, anyways, uh, you want to look at theology. You want to look at how God is defined uh, as an anthropomorphic God. You'll find, oh, you'll find no description of God or, or depiction of God or even a name for God in the Old Testament. Anyone who tells you that there is a name for God has not fully gone back to the ancient texts, have not had, had not a full understanding of things, and there are things that they're missing that say that there is no there is no name, there is no description of God, there's no depiction of God. The only appearance that you have in the uh, 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 in the Old Testament where you have a face that's, that's revealed is in the meeting with Abraham where you have the three strangers meeting Abraham, and one of the strangers reveals his face, and it's got the face of Christ. It's the, this is the this is the prophecy 
of the birth of Christ. This is what the whole the whole Abraham the whole uh, called Abrahamic religions are based on is the, the coming of the Messiah, and, and this is this is where it's revealed. The, there is the, at the meeting of Abraham. This is where the, the coming of the Messiah is revealed, and so all these religions, uh, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, are based off of this. The, they all come from this. The one that you, the one you want to ask about is, is which one is the most uh, accurate path? Which one gives you the closest approximate truth? We're really talking about in the limit in the limit here. Right, we, we never actually reach it to you, get, you approach it. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, uh, I think I'll leave this for now, and we'll discuss about we'll, we'll get maybe a little bit more into this in the next section, on the next segment of the BTS vlog. So uh, I'll see you then. Democratic Earth. Earth.